What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Tactical Advantage. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the special purpose rifle build we've been working on for about six months. Uh, this has been a really fun build, just got it completed. Uh, actually going to the range tomorrow for our first testing. Uh, knocking on wood that everything runs well. Uh, but basically, uh, it's a top tier rifle build that we decided to do in 308. Uh, went after kind of a lot of parts that I wouldn't normally run into or try and use just because they're cost prohibitive. Um, but this was really a special build for me. I had a lot of fun doing it. So I guess to start off, we'll just uh, real quickly take a couple close-up views of the gun. Uh, give you guys some good sweeping shots so you can kind of see what we're working with. And then I will come back and we will discuss the parts used for the build. These were kind of chosen because they were machined out for the challenge coin. This is from their El Capitan line. I don't think they're continuing to make the challenge coin receivers in 308. Uh, however, I'm sure if uh, you dug the idea, if you gave them a call, they might accommodate you. Uh, then we go straight into the Luth AR MBR1 rifle stock. Uh, excellent value here, guys. 130 bucks. Uh, has all the kind of adjustments you could possibly want. Good value for what you're looking at right there. Uh, then we have the CTK Precision bottom rail for the <coughs> MBA-1. Uh, the buffer assembly buffer tube rifle length is all aero precision. Uh, we actually have a Hyper Fire Hyper Touch Eclipse trigger in it. Uh, Praxis Precision. Precision is a small American company that mills out these hand grips. Uh, really nice, nice machine work. Good stuff right there. Uh, we have a Phase 5 bolt release in the 308 pattern. I believe it's called the V2. Uh, the reason we went with that is because it's a single piece unit. It actually replaces the bolt release and the ambi is one single part versus like a bad lever which would be something that goes on to your mag release or your bolt release inside the receiver uh, i thought that was probably a better option for this gun being kind of a little bit tougher uh, then we have the odin works gen 3 magazine release uh, we're running kns push pins in the dpms pattern uh, these are pretty trick man i'll probably have another video on about these uh, but basically there's there's no detent, no springs. These actually have like a ball retainer. Uh, so you can push it and pull the pin right out. Pretty trick stuff right there. Um, CMMG is where we got the lower parts kit. Uh, basically just used an AR-15 parts kit. Uh, a lot of the parts I already had or wanted specific parts. So it didn't make sense to go with a 308 parts kit. Uh, where really all I was left with was a couple little things that I needed that I could get out of an AR-15 parts kit. 
and then I can put the rest of that kit into my, my extra stock parts uh, for later builds. Uh, then we have the SMF Tactical 18 inch extra rail <coughs> forend. Uh, actually glad that I went with an 18. Uh, it's kind of tough out there in the market to find anything. If you're going to run a longer barrel, uh, 16 inch, 16.4, that's about the longest you see. There's only a couple companies I found out there that are actually making extended length into like 18, 20 inch. Uh, I was kind of on the fence for a while if I wanted to go 20 inch or not. Uh, glad I went with the 18. I think it looks good with the 20 inch barrel. Uh, probably have another video up in the near future about the rail. Uh, pretty happy with that so far. Next we have our barrel assembly from T-Box Barrels out of North Carolina. Uh, that's a 20 inch barrel in their .936 SPR profile. Uh, <laughs> that's a 416 stainless barrel, uh, button rifled. Really nice stuff right there. Superb machinery so far from what I've seen. Uh, we're going to break it in tomorrow and see how it acts, but so far I have very, very high hopes for that barrel. Uh, inside the upper receiver, we have a Rainier Ultra Match bolt carrier. The bolt within the carrier actually came with and was fitted to this barrel. Uh, next, you have the SLR Sentry 9 uh, adjustable gas block. The Radian Raptor AR-10 charging handle in titanium. Rifle length gas tube. The odd mount 20 MOA scope mount. Then we have the Vortex Golden Eagle 15 by 60 by 52. Uh, this is a second focal plane scope. Uh, I thought it made a lot of sense with what I kind of planned on doing with it in my, my real world application, just punching paper. And maybe trying to run 308 out as far as I could. Having like a, a first focal plane scope didn't really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, really the prime runner when we started this build would have been like, like the HD line. Uh, something in the razors. Uh, but once I got to looking at this Golden Eagle I thought it, it made a lot of sense to try and run with it. Plus I don't see a lot of them out there. Uh, that particular optic was originally kind of brought into market for like f-class shooters so it kind of fits kind of what i'm trying to go for with this build i think it's going to be a really exciting piece of glass for us to play with uh, next you have the atlas bt10 bipod uh, that does have the quick release uh, then we have the american precision armament little bastard break uh, that was actually machined by a local gunsmith uh, Todd Kuntz or Kuntz Customs here in Salem, Oregon. Guy did a great job. I know those brakes well. They work very, very well. They're very effective. Uh, plus, I you know, there's something to be said for like a machine brake. You know, that's timed correctly. No crush washer. Almost like a seamless install. Oh, it makes me happy just to look at. Um, then you've got a couple miscellaneous parts here. Uh, seeking safety. Uh, obviously your dust cover things like that but really we're through like the big consequence of everything uh, like I said before you know this was kind of a, a no holds barred kind of build uh, it took me quite a while to get everything together for it uh, and I'm pretty happy with the way it came out hopefully she performs uh, it's going to be an interesting test tomorrow uh, we've put a lot of thought and time into this build so uh with that, I guess we can get into speaking about expense or cost of, uh, of building a rifle like this. Okay, well first things first, uh, I'm not going to pull any punches. This was not an inexpensive rifle to build. Uh, we're in it for a pretty good portion of money. Uh, I didn't use YouTube or uh, my background in firearms or anything to leverage any discounted pricing on this. Uh, basically, I played I paid street price on every part on this rifle build. Uh, I didn't get a break on anything. Uh, if anything, I probably paid a little more because I wasn't really waiting for sales. But I'll run through kind of the, the parts breakout and the pricing to give you an idea of what it would cost to build something at like this kind of level. Uh, I guess we'll start with the Area 53 upper and lower receivers. 
Uh, again, I don't think they're making these challenge coins anymore. And I definitely think you can get some lesser expensive receivers out there. But their lowers are extremely nice. But anyway, uh, these two parts together were about $510. Uh, the MBA1 was $139. The CTK Precision Add a Rail, $35. The Aero Precision Buffer Tube Assembly uh, with spring and buffer uh, ran right at about $60. The Hyperfire Eclipse was around 260 bucks. The Praxis Precision Billet Grip uh, was 149. Uh, the Phase 5 V2 AR10 was $54. The Odin Works Gen 3 Magazine Release, $20. Uh, the two KNS push pins for the 308 and the DPMS pattern were $45. Uh, the LPK that we mentioned earlier that we used from CMMG was $36. The SMF Tactical 8-inch, 18-inch with extra bottom rail was $299.95. Uh, the T-Box Barrel and Bolt uh, were $375. The Rainier Ultra Match Bolt Carrier with QPQ Finish was $239. The SLR Sentry Adjustable Gas Block in the 9.936 pattern uh, was around $119. The Raptor AR-10 charging handle in tungsten was $99. The rifle link gas tube $16.95. Uh, the odd mount 20 MOA. Oh, another little interesting point of note that you guys will see later in another video is he's got little uh, levels built in them with tritium behind them. Slick. Very slick. Uh, but this was actually a blemished unit I got from them. Uh, I knew I was going to spray the gun, so I wasn't really worried about a blem piece. Uh, so I think I got it for just sub $200. Uh, the Vortex Golden Eagle hit right at around $1,500. Uh, the Atlas BT-10 uh, with the arms quick release uh, was right around $279. The American Precision Little Bastard Brake was $125. Uh, won't really get into the gunsmithing. Uh, that was actually relatively affordable, uh, but I didn't tack it into the total price. Uh, then we've got, again, the Seekins, uh, the dust cover, all that. So we're probably talking about roughly $60 right there. Uh, so all in, we're looking right at around $4,620. Uh, so definitely not inexpensive. I know that'll give some people some pause and uh, maybe make you gasp a little bit. Uh, but like I said before, I mean, this was kind of a once in a lifetime build for me. Uh, I don't build all my guns like this. I, I am not an excessive builder. Uh, I'm kind of a firm believer in quantity. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this was a special build for us. Another point of note is the coating job on the gun. Uh, I did that myself out of Duracoat. Uh, if you were going to send that off to have something this kind of complex done, you're probably looking at another 500 or so. Uh, so you'd probably be a little bit over 5K. Uh, but uh, so really, I mean, now we've got to get it out there and, and see how she runs. Uh, hopefully she will be extremely accurate because God knows we put some money into her and uh, we expect some performance now. But anyway uh, there's going to be a lot of parts and a lot of videos on this gun i mean we're testing a lot of products we haven't used before uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring you guys some useful stuff uh, but that's that and uh tomorrow we'll be at the range with it so thanks for stopping by guys wish me luck